and welcome everyone. Uh, today, uh, as Joni said, I will be teaching on what are known as the SD uh, uh, instruments, and those are actually, uh, a that's a company that's actually owned by Fletcher Music Center, so it's a name owned by, uh, by them. Um, and a lot of these ones that we teach on are fairly recent too, so we're even discovering some neat things about them that we might not have known. Uh, so what's great is if you don't have this instrument too, it'll apply. You know, anything we teach uh, for the most part will apply to the EZ series as well as any of the ones above. You know, like the more, uh, the, the larger your instrument, the more options you have. So you can just kind of expand on what we're going to talk about today. And today's purpose is really just to, you know, kind of get to know your instrument a little bit better. Most of you, if you've been watching these online classes or if you've uh, read it, your manual front to back, you might know your instrument pretty well already. Um, what's nice about this class, I think, is you'll get to know just a little bit more, and every little bit helps. Let's see. Okay, we've got a new Freedom owner in here, too, so congratulations, and hopefully you'll learn something as well. So just read that in the chat. So let's get started. So today what I want to kind of talk about is, like I said, getting to know your instrument. And the question I get asked most frequently in here is, if I want to play a song, you know, you put your song in front of you, how do you set it up? You know, how do you know what button to press to play your song, right? I see some <laughs> clapping. Yeah, uh, that's, a, that's a really, really popular question. And the answer is, you just got to know sometimes. So I'll give you a couple different tricks and, and uh, easy ways to figure that out. But more than anything, uh, you kind of have to get to know it. So I'll show you how to get to know it too. So before I get started, let's just play a song, have some fun, and I'll talk about this a little bit later as well. For whatever reason, the sound to me sounds like a little fuzzy today. I don't know if it's this cable, but it's a little late to go switching it out. So if it sounds a little fuzzy, that's why it shouldn't be too bad though. So it just bugs me because I'm a perfectionist. <laughs> so uh, here's a little bluegrass music. Uh, see if you can name the tune or tunes, depending on if I feel like playing other songs in there too. So here we go. is so fun. Yeah, if you have uh, an easy 10, I believe you have that rhythm as well. It's called the train on that. In here, they call it bluegrass train. So it's a really fun style to play with. Uh, any guesses to what song that was? I think that's the Wabash Cannonball. You got it. Wabash Cannonball. So that's a, that's a really fun song to play too and very easy. So if you want to learn that at home, go for it. If you got the music, um, if you don't, let me know, and I see if I can uh, scrounge it up for you. But uh, so I kept that very simple. I pressed two buttons to play that song. I touched country, and I touched a button called Styles 2. So I'll talk about that in a little bit. But like I said, we want to try to get to know our instruments. So I'm going to give you a kind of a couple easy ways to get started. Uh, the first way is to go by these buttons on the left side. We're mostly going to be talking about this side, not as much these buttons over here today. Uh, on the left side here, they make it so easy. I just had a, a student with a, a keyboard the other day saying, I cannot figure this out. I got to punch in all these numbers and codes. Uh, you've got the easiest instruments in the world. If you've got a, a Discovery 3 or an Easy 1, or this, the Freedom 3, or any of the easies. These are the easiest instruments, hence the name. Uh, but what they do is they go by genre, or 
style. And the way I think about this here, this will be a good thing if you want to kind of write it down, you have a couple different variations here. So any of these blue buttons, when you touch it, think about it this way. It's like getting a prescription. If you touch this button, you're getting generic. You're just getting your generic uh, prescription. Uh, it's affordable. It's right there. You don't have to go through any hoops to get it. You touch it, and it comes up. So for an example, let's talk about standards. If I touch the standards button, I get the generic standards. And if you have a screen uh, that gives you more information, it'll tell you the name of that rhythm is called swing time. So if I touch standards, here's my generic prescription for standards. It'll work for almost any standard type song. So that was using my generic brand, <laughs> just a kind of a, an analogy for you. Uh, what's cool is each of these rhythms here, if you have anything above, you know, maybe an easy one or discovery, uh, you have some other options, you know. If you have an easy series, you might have guitarist or the pianist version of all of these rhythms. On uh, this instrument, the Freedom 3 that I'm playing on today, I have a button called Styles 2, which just gives you more of that uh, of that option there. So if you don't want generic, you can get name brand. You can get specific. There's one in here. If I have the standards button on, I get another one I can try called boogie. So this is if you want something really specific to a boogie rhythm. This won't work necessarily with the swing time, the, the generic here. So this is if I use my specific name brand boogie style. <laughs> I should say. So that's if I want name brand here. So the whole point, the whole purpose of this too, isn't to just know which one you're getting. That's just an example kind of of how to look at it. If you have more than one style, think of it that way. You've got your generic, just if you touch the button and play, it'll work with most anything. If you want something more specific, uh, you will change and try to see if you have a different variation or different... Uh, uh, specific or name brand style. So I'll give a couple more examples, but uh, first, the best way to kind of think about it here is if you know the song, you know. So like I said before, if you're thinking, I want to play a certain song, how do I set it up? Well, first, your option, the easiest way to do it is if you have a button in the center of your instrument called Song Setup. So most of you know about this if you have an instrument like this. If you don't, uh, super simple. It's like hiring an agent. If you don't know how to set up a song, if you don't know what band to hire, you say, well, I'll have my agent do it for me. So if you go to song setup, say you want to play a song like the Alley Cat song. It's easy enough. It starts with the letter A. This is in alphabetical order. So you go to Alley Cat song. And since I don't know what buttons to press for that song, I just have the instrument do it for me. So I click Alley Cat Song, select, 
and it's good to go. It chose the best style to play with that song automatically. So you don't have to do any button pressing or searching around. It's good to go. Here's what it gave me. That's just one example. It gave me a sound on the top and a rhythm to play with my left hand here automatically. So I didn't have to think. But what if it's not in the song setup? What do we do? You know, that's the question we get a lot. So let's answer that. Here's the first thing I do is I listen to the original song. So say I want to play something like, ooh, let's do a random one, uh, Tennessee Waltz. You guys know that song. You might think, okay, I can kind of think of a couple buttons maybe I can press to play that. But what helps first is saying, here, let's try this. Let's see if this works. I'm going to try something new here. Let's do this. I'm going to share the screen. So this is if I want to. Is sharing the right screen here. Do you guys see Google on there? Is that what you see? Yes. Okay, good, good. Okay, so if I wanted to listen to the song first, the easiest way to do it is I go on the computer here and I just type in the name of the song, hit enter, boop. And a lot of the time, the first thing that comes up is the original, and it's got usually a video of some type like this. So let's click on this, and hopefully, I don't know, hopefully it won't be too loud or anything. was dancing with my darling to the Tennessee walls when an old friend I happened to see. All right, so that's just kind of an example what I do. So before I play a song, even if I kind of know it, I just do that. Go to the Google, hit search, and then it's ready to go. It's just sitting right there for me, and I hit play. And now I kind of have a good idea. Oh, it's got kind of this country feel. Country, and it's a waltz, obviously. So what I would do for that is I can hit that 3-4 button, and it'll give me my generic waltz. So it just comes up with what's called easy waltz. But I can go a step further, you know, kind of think critically a little bit and say, well, what else do I have? If you have other options in here, try them out. There's actually one in here. Uh, if I touch 3-4 and I look at my other variations, I wonder if this works here. I've got another camera, but it's not too close either. So if I touch this waltz button in the corner, I'm just touching this button right underneath that says Styles 2, which is kind of like a second page on the screen of different rhythms. And the first one on here, it says Country Waltz. So I can put on my introduction and see if I get something close now. Oh, that's much better than the original. So basically all I did is I went just one step further here rather than just going with my generic brand waltz, which sounds good, but what it is is it gives you kind of a simple, what's called easy waltz, like this. Just very bare bones. 
but I want my specific name brand. So I look to see what else I have. And uh, the second tip here, kind of, uh, as far as using these as sort of your generic genre or styles, and going a step further is what I like to do is even before, you know, I go trying to find a specific song or a rhythm for a specific song, uh, this will really help you get to know your instrument. Uh, what I like to do, uh, whenever we get a new instrument here at the store that, you know, the staff gets excited, wow, we've never had an SD before or never gotten this SD Freedom 3 before, we don't look through the manual a lot of the time. We don't go, okay, well, we better read about it. It's not really a page turner for us, so we don't get excited about that. We get excited about playing it. So what we do is we'll s press each button. Let's do, uh, let's do a different one. Let's do country. So I'll touch the country button, <coughs> and that's all I have on. Let me go to this other camera. So I touch the country button, <coughs> and all I'm going to do is just touch any old chord, just any chord. I'm just going to do a C chord here and just see what comes up. There's my generic brand, my regular country. Now, what I do next is I say, well, what if I want a different one? I look at the different options if I have them. If you don't have extra options, don't use them. Just joking. Uh, but if you do, I just go to the other option here. There's one below it on the screen that says acoustic guitar. So let's listen to that. Then I can hit stop and say, okay, I like that. That could work with some songs. And then I go to the Styles 2 button. Or if you have an easy 4 or easy 10, you can go to, you know, pianist or guitarist, things like that. You have other uh, types of rhythms here. So if I go to the next one, it gives me one called Country Love. So I'll just touch a C chord again. And then lastly, there's the one I started with called Bluegrass Train. Nice and fast. I tried to make it look like I, I was dancing, but f when it, all you can see is my hands. I'm just milking a cow, it looks like. Uh, but uh, so you get four different country styles there. So you get your generic, and then you get all these extra ones. So when you know... I want to play a country song. If you listen to those four different styles enough, you'll eventually know what might work best. So, for example, if I want to play something like Hank Williams, I don't know if you know who that is, but <laughs> he was uh, popular in the late 40s and early 50s. But uh, he's got a very, uh, what's the word, consistent sound, where it's kind of a country swing. So if I touch that country button, my generic... That's pretty much Hank Williams right there. Hank Williams is the country original, I think, so a lot of these generic sounds, like this country one, this sounds just like him to me. So if I play something like this, there he is. Now, say I want to play something a little more specific than him. I might want to play a, like a country piano player like Floyd Kramer. You know, that might not sound good with Floyd Kramer. So what I can do is I look a little further and say, okay, I remember that country love one had kind of a, a slow feel to it. So let's try that. Now that sounds really good rhythm-wise. That sounds perfect. But Floyd Kramer didn't play a guitar. What did he play? Do you know? Nobody knows. Floyd Kramer was a piano player. 
So I would just touch the button on the right side that says piano. And then now I can really sound like him. So right there, I kind of got more and more specific as I went along. I started with just uh, Hank Williams, and I said, okay, let's make it more specific now. Let's try uh, Floyd Kramer, <coughs> and then you try a different rhythm. So what I would do is if you, whatever instrument you got home, it doesn't matter. Uh, what I would do just for fun and to kind of get to know it is to go through every rhythm just for fun. Go through every rhythm on here, you know, mellow, for example. Touch a, any old chord. Just listen to it, get an idea of it, go to the next one, you know. There are a couple other smooths. There's one that's called Smooth 16 Beat, which is kind of a contemporary sort of style. And you can kind of think for each of these what might sound good to play with. And maybe you don't, and that's okay too. You'll have that, you'll remember that once you're trying to figure out a song, you know, if you're trying to figure out um, uh, Everly Brothers, you know, or something like that, like I said first, go to Google, you know, go to go on your phone. I don't have my phone. Go to your phone. If you've got one of those smartphones, um, which sometimes feels smarter than me, uh, look up a song, just type it in, listen to it, and then come back to your instrument and then press these buttons and say, okay, what sounds the most like that? You know, so let's do this example. Let's do one more. So I'm going to go back to my Google here. Got a bunch of stuff on here. Here, there we go. Okay, here's my Google. We were just listening to Tennessee Walt. So let's go up here now and say I want to play... Uh, bye Bye Love. I had to think of I like a lot of different Everly Brothers songs, but let's do this one. Bye Bye Love, you could just click on what comes up first, or I just maybe go specific here, Everly Brothers. Get all these different videos. You can watch them play live, but I'm just going to do the first one here. Oh, and you got to listen to an ad sometimes. That's just fun. Let me stop that. There we go. So just out of that three-second listen, you get a couple ideas of how it might sound. That's kind of a rock and roll sound, I'd say, you know. But it kind of has an acoustic sound. So let's go to rock. And I can already see on the screen here, right when I touch rock, you get one called rock 8-beat. You can try that. Let's try listening to that. Kind of cool, but it doesn't sound anything to me like the Everly Brothers. So what I would do is say, let's try another one. Let's try acoustic rock. Instantly, right away, that sounds good. So for your specific instruments at home, like I say, they're all different. You know, you've got different rhythms built in. Go through and listen to the different uh, styles you have. You've got the generic brand, and then you've got the uh, more specifics. So that's just one way that I like to 
try to figure out what how to set up each uh, song that I want to play. Go through it one by one, listen to the song. That's step one. Step two, pick a genre that you think is closest. And step three, decide if you want the generic or the name brand, you know. So I'm just relating it to drugs for some reason. <laughs> just decided to do that off the cuff there. But uh, anyway, so that's just one way I do it. Uh, you can do it different ways or, like I say, listen to everything you got once in a while. It's a good exercise just to... You know, like I said, as a staff, we get excited sometimes when something new comes into the store. We like to play every rhythm and just listen to it. And then go on to another one, listen to that one. And then it gets us excited because we think of all the different things we've got here that we can play with. And you can think of all the different songs that you have in your books that now you can play them. You can play them yourself. And just like I said, if you have you know, the more, the higher the instrument, you know, the basically the more money you spend on it, uh, the more choices you have, the more songs out of your books you can play, uh, the more uh, name brand styles you can play. They're called uh, signature styles on these instruments. So if you see one with a specific name on it, sometimes that's what's called a, a, uh, a signature style. So there's one on here called Rising Sun. You know, and if you have an easy 10, you have this as well. But that's called a signature style. <laughs> Sounds familiar? <laughs> that's as much of that song as I know. So, uh <laughs> That's uh, ri uh, House of the Rising Sun, so you've got a signature style for that. Um, and in your song setups, you might have some more signature styles in there as well. So uh, keep that in mind. That's just the easy way to set up a song. I'm going to take a moment to see if we have any questions. And then i got a couple cool uh, tricks that you can use uh, to kind of add on to that and make it really uh, specific to you, what you want to hear, give you some customizing options. So any questions so far? Hal, let me unmute you. Go ahead, sir. It should ask you to unmute on your screen there. Hopefully. Sorry. No, that's okay. Sorry about that. You're I fine. Go ahead. To, I forgot to unmute. Um, on the, I have the Easy 10. Ooh. And... Now, you, what you're saying is, I took a look before, you know, like with standards. Mm -hmm. if, I, if I clicked on standards, then under the uh, full band, it comes up with Frank and the Count. Yep. And then under the pianist, it's two beat piano. And then under guitarist, it's the guitar swing. Correct. So what, you, so what you're saying then is to go through each uh, each of them and just and just listen to them. Exactly. Yeah, it's a great exercise because it you know obviously every instrument's a little bit different. We've got hun almost hundreds of uh, different instruments that we teach on, so not all of them are going to be the exact same style. When you pull them up, they might sound a little bit different, but it bas basically works that same way, where you kind of have your more, your, I don't want to say generic always, but it's your more useful one that's going to work for most anything, and then you get your specifics. So what okay. you can do is, yeah, press yeah, standards, full band, and then yeah. hit a chord. Just listen to that Frank and the Count style and think, oh, this could sound good with this, or maybe it could sound good with that. You know, then touch the guitarist button if you have that. Yeah, listen to I that. Do. Yeah, I do. Good. All right. Yeah, it's a good exercise. Try it with all the different genres, you know, okay. traditional yeah. and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, you get a I'll lot of ideas. I'll try that. Good. Sometimes sometimes we get people that, that are afraid to, to touch buttons, you know, where, you know, they get a new instrument, especially when you get something new, you go, oh, I don't want to break anything. I just got this. <laughs> You know, so you kind of look at it and you say, well, I'll just do what the teacher says. And the teacher might say, today we're teaching this song, go play it. 
and then you play the song, and then what? Well, you want to do something else, don't you? So experiment. Play a, play a couple other things on your own. Touch buttons. Um, if you have a, an SD or an Easy series, my favorite button is all the way on the left. It says home. That way, if you make a mistake or you do something goofy, just go home. That's what I say. So <coughs> just it'll reset the organ or virtual orchestra back to right when you turn it on. And all the goofiness that you put in there or any button you press that you don't like, it resets. It goes away. So you can't hurt anything. So like I said, that's what we do at the store here. Right when we, get, right when we got these SDs in for the very first time, we would just press a button, see what it sounds like, press a button, see what it sounds like. Not just the rhythms, but we'd take the sounds on the left side, you know, say, oh, there's a tenor saxophone, let's hear it. And then we go, ooh, that's nice, you know. We think of what can we use that for? What can we use this for? You know. So it's kind of a backwards way of thinking of it. Most people would pick a song first and then say, well, now I've got to figure out what to do with the song. But if you do it backwards, listen to what you got here first, then maybe listen to the song, the original song on you know, YouTube like I did, and, and then you might think, oh, that sound that I heard earlier, that'll go really well with this. You know, it, it kind of helps you get to know the instrument better. So. Thanks, Sean. Yeah, of course. Any other questions? Got a couple other cool things I can talk about. Just goes above and beyond a little bit. Uh, I'll go ahead. The first thing, uh, we talk about this in a lot of classes. This is if you have... Um, I think anything with a two keyboard or if you have what's called a feature menu, okay? This is cool. Even if you don't have it, this is really cool because the organ, even if you have Discovery 3 or an easy one, it actually does these things on its own for you. But what the feature men menu does is it kind of gives you the option to do a lot of different tricks uh, on your own anytime. So what you can do is let's try this. Let me go to my other camera again here. I don't think it'll be too much better because you can't read it still. Yeah. Uh, it, oh, well, that's close enough. So what you can do here, this is really fun. Your feature menu, which is always located just to the right of the touch screen, or not touch screen, but any screen. So if you have a screen, look to the right, and you'll, you should see a button. If you have more than one uh, keyboard, it'll say feature and you touch it. And what happens on the screen? It pops up with different features and benefits uh, for you. The first one on here we talk about all the time. It is called transpose. We talk about this in a lot of different classes. And uh, there are a couple different good uses for this. What I like to do is I am the perfectionist, like I said. I always want whatever I'm playing to sound like the original. I want it to sound just like the Everly Brothers or just like Floyd Kramer. So after I set up the rhythm and the sound that I want to use, you can go a step further here. And if you transpose it, you can, l you can actually look up uh, you know, on Google the same way. Let's see if this works. Let me try this here. I'm going to share the screen again with... Uh, here's the Everly Brothers again. Let's just type in... Bye bye love, original key, or original. Oh my gosh, original key. And what happens is a lot of the time, if you look at just a little bit closely, you don't even have to click on anything. Look at this. If I go to here, it just says G. Bye bye love, G. And y sometimes it's wrong, sometimes it's right, but. I always just go with it. So what I would do is take that transpose here, hit enter, and it tells you what key do you want it. It starts off on C, but let's go to G. And then let's try that same song again with our country style we used. Oop, the, no, rock. It was rock. Acoustic rock here. So let's try it. This is the original key. So 
it's just kind of fun to s listen to it the way the artist may have intended, you know, rather than what is on the easy play sheet music. It's, you know, anything we have for the most part, it's in the key of C just to make it easy for the player because that means all you need to know are the white keys. Uh, but sometimes the original artist might have said, oh, I want this to have all sorts of sharps and flats. <laughs> Uh, but the easy way to get around that is play it with our easy play music in C and use the transpose feature to bring the entire instrument up or down to the original key. Hopefully that makes sense, but that's what I like to use it for, that transpose, because it gives you a really good sound. It sounds just like the original. Woohoo! Um, another feature, I'm going to talk about three. Here's the second one. This is just getting a little bit more specific. Uh, this is something, like I said, this comes on and off on its own in a lot of the one keyboard instruments. So you don't have to worry about it too much, but this is nice in the feature menu because it gives you the freedom whether you want to turn it off or on. It's called touch. Does anybody know what touch is? Let's see if you guys know. I'm going to quiz you. Does anybody know what the touch feature does? It's always the same, or you can uh, make it louder or sharp, uh, quieter. Close, yeah. It's basically the touch sensitivity of your keys here. So basically, it's responding to you by touch. So if you touch it hard, is it going to be loud or quiet? It's going to be loud. Perfect. And if you touch it soft, it's going to be? Quiet. Quiet. Perfect. So you can kind of, what's really nice is playing something like a piano. If you play a piano, if you've ever played a real piano, you know that if you touch the keys uh, with different sort of uh, pressure, you know that you're going to get some kind of a different sound. If you think of Beethoven's uh, Fifth Symphony, dun 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 you know, he's, he's pounding on those keys. If you, if you listen to something like uh, maybe Moonlight Sonata or something like that, Pressing very soft. Uh, so what you can do is a lot of the time this touch feature is automatically on because you want to hear the notes, you know, so they, <laughs> they make it so you don't have to press very hard. But then that kind of makes it feel a little bit flat and lifeless, not like a real piano. So this is with it off, you know, if I'm just playing chords. You know, it's, it's very flat, feels like one you know, sensitivity, but if I turn it off and I play, you can play it nice and soft and then get loud at any time. So I recommend trying that. Uh, if it's off, just try turning it on. If it's on and you don't want it on, turn it off, you know. But it's it's a great feature because it makes it feel very real. You know, just like if you're listening to a trumpet player or a saxophone player, they don't play every single note honk, 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 <laughs> the same volume. They'll play some loud, some soft, just to give you kind of a breathe, bring life into it so it feels like somebody actually blowing into an instrument. So if you turn that feature on, it's going to sound really authentic. So that's the touch feature. <coughs> Any questions on the touch or the transpose? Cool. Must be easy enough. <coughs> the last thing I'll talk about, this is only on some of the instruments. This isn't on all the, the easy instruments. This is actually kind of a higher-end uh, feature that they stuck into some of these. It's called reverb. <coughs> What's nice is it's actually automatically on, which is what you want <laughs> on the uh, easy series. <coughs> but this is a really, really cool feature. Uh, if you have... I think the Freedom 3 or anything higher, if you have like a, you can't see it, but over here there's what's called a fanfare or journey um, or all these big ones back here. <coughs> there's a feature called reverb, and I love it. Uh, and I'll just explain really quick what it is. All reverb is, if you see those buttons, some instruments have those buttons. You know, even if you don't have it, it's kind of cool to know what it is. Because like I said, yours is doing doing it automatically, but... It changes the size of the room that you're in. So let's do an example here. I'm just going to put on a clarinet. And then I'm going to 
take my reverb level and I'm going to turn it all the way down. So with no reverb, it's going to make my room really small. It's going to sound like I'm playing in a closet and doing like a kid doing scales in his closet. <laughs> See how it sounds right in front of you? It sounds like it's in a very small room. <coughs> so what you can do is if you turn that reverb all the way up, it does the opposite. Now it's going to sound like I'm playing in a big hall, you know? So you can kind of hear an echo in there. So it sounds like you're playing in a big hall. So that's just one little thing. If you, if you want to kind of customize the way you're playing a little bit, you can add or take away some reverb. That's really fun because you can, you know, pretend you're playing in a big hall in front of everybody, you know. Or you can turn it down and it'll feel like you're playing just for yourself, you know. And like I said, on all the easy series, it kind of does it automatically for you so you don't have to worry about it. But it's kind of fun to be able to play with the uh, adjustment levels too, so... Any questions about anything I've talked about today or any off-topic even? Any questions you might have about your instrument at home? Go ahead. I see somebody has a question. No, it's not a question. It's uh, from what you were talking about. I think the most fun with playing is improvising. Like you said, you could not only play different melodies, you could you could change like say um, a Latin American uh, tune. Uh, oh, I can't hear you. I think you got muted there somehow. I like what I like where you were going with it though. Yeah, I was saying most of, most of the fun is just. Not sticking by the rule book. <laughs> exactly, exactly. That's a great, great point, and I, I appreciate you bringing that up because that's what I think a lot of people get stuck in the habit of is uh, you're all rule followers, you know, order followers even, you know. If, you're, if, you, if you've ever been in the military or if you've ever had kind of any sort of uh, machinery or uh, industrial work, things like that, a lot of, a lot of you are very, very step-by-step uh, which is an amazing way to learn. It's a really good way to learn. But sometimes when you're at home, just sitting by yourself, you got to say, well, what else can I do? Well, let's goof around. Let's fart around on this thing. <laughs> you know, and you'll get all sorts of different ideas. Um, and like you said, improvisation too. So, Great. The way you think reminds me so much of my attitude. Good. You know, I, yeah. Uh, yeah, there was a few things you said, and I said to myself, man, I could relate to that. Like what you said about uh, when you get a new instrument, you can't wait to play it. And I feel that way when I get a new music book. I'll be up till yeah. 1 o'clock in the morning playing. Good. So that's good. how I, I, yeah. Good. Well, sleep in if you do that, too. Yeah. Get, some, <laughs> get, a, get a good amount of rest, you know. But that's great. That's great, and I appreciate all those words. So. It's never monotonous. Good. Always keep doing something different. So, any other questions or comments? I'm just going to play a song for you on our way out. Hopefully, this class did something for you. You'll, I was going to say, maybe when you get home, you can play, but you're already at home, so just play. Uh, so, like I say, fart around. That's, that's my, the key, I think, to all this. Fart around on the instrument. Uh, so, I'll play a song for you on our way out. Thanks for attending today. Let's play some more rock and roll. I want to do some rock and roll. Let's play uh, uh, Rock Around the Clock. That's a fun one. And I'm just going to use not my generic, but I'm going to go to my 50s rock and roll. Or if, you, if you've got an easy series, it's called uh, Rock Guitarist. And it gives you this here. One, two, three.
Thank you so much. I just realized I had the reverb all the way up in that too, so it probably sounded like I was in a big, great hall. So that's <laughs> kind of fun. So Thank you, John. That was very nice. You're welcome. Thank you, and have a great day, everybody. You and too. Keep playing. Thank you so much, Sean. You're welcome. Happy New Year. Bye-bye. Happy New Year. Yeah, that's coming yeah, up happy too. Happy New Year. Yeah, soon be. <laughs> Let's hope it's better. Yeah. Well, you need to tell them that when they find a, a setup that suits their music, they need to write it down on the music so they don't forget it. Oh, yeah. Take notes. Copious notes. That's what I do. Write everything. Even if you won't understand it later, sometimes we get that. I wrote all these notes, but I don't know what they mean. <laughs> but it's better than nothing. So. All right. Well, have a good day. Thank you, Sean. Bye-bye. Yeah.